Hi everybody, how's it going? I'm Zero. I'm DK. And I'm Rizzo. And today on Anime Reaction, we watch the 10th episode of Muramasa Senju Sensei. If you want to check out our reaction to the 10th episode of Aramanga Sensei, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga. And don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for watching. watching. So, as predicted, in this episode of Muramasa Senju Sensei, it's all about her. It's uh, all about her. I actually wouldn't say that. Well, the elf this does try to this, steal the yeah, show. Yeah, this, this episode was less about her than the last episode was about elf. That's true, but that that, that still that works, though. Muramasa is more of a subdued character until she goes full throttle. Whereas elf's, you know, full bore all the time. Muramasa is definitely forcefully, like, only support character. As much as much as she wants to be, you, you can indeed, tell that the author is not trying to make a uh, super strong case for her to be, you know, the the third the winner. Yeah, the third heroine. However, um, they certainly they certainly tried to ship um, Masamune and what what was that other dude's name? <laughs> the gay option. The oh. gay option. <laughs> The other author, because uh, yeah, and, and yeah, I really do feel bad for that guy. He he is running with the wrong crowd. No joke. Man. But in, in this episode, we get uh, they were playing a game of a, a the, game the of the King's, King's game. game. Yeah, I've never even heard of the King's game. Really? Uh, yeah. It's kind of you don't watch the kind of anime that it would show up in. As a, it is a staple of uh, slice of life anime. Yeah. It, Usually, it's played with like like uh, toothpicks or chopsticks or something in a cup and then one of them or draw straws or something no well yeah it's like drawing straws but like one of them will have like a crown on it or a star or something like that to denote the king and then all the other ones have numbers on them and so you just draw a straw and you get whatever you get and here they're using cards which I think is kind of weird oh, it's I actually got, like I it so. The king's order is absolute. <laughs> but yeah, you do see a, a fair bit uh, of slice of life anime, especially with uh, summer vacation episodes like this. Yeah. So the first, the first order that was sent out by Elf <laughs> Sensei, which she did on purpose, <laughs> was to set one and two to kiss. Even though she knew that. <laughs> Even though she knew Muramasa had card number three. <laughs> Betrayal, uh, and the and the way our our poor gay option he just he just bolts, <laughs> right? He's like he's like fuck nope, this shit, fuck this shit out. I'm out. <laughs> this is not the yeah. This is not the kind of game that I want to be. In. <laughs> nope. I don't want to be internet famous. <laughs> poor bastard. Oh yeah, you knew it was rigged right away. Oh yeah, as, especially as especially when Muramasa was doing the not covert at all. I'm number three. Like El's gonna you know, gonna let Muramasa get her hands on Masamune. Come on now. Sadly, he missed the swimsuit. Uh, technically no, because he did come back with Chris, and I'm pretty sure that Elf was still in her swimsuit there. But uh, well, Chris came back. She was fully clothed again. In order she, to get to that yeah. swimsuit, they decided to get. <laughs> to get Aramanga, oh, yeah, Aramanga Sensei to come in and play king permanently because she can't draw okay. cards. Oh, By the know. way, that fucking reference. <laughs> Aramanga Dio. <laughs> yeah. oh, Aramanga Dio. Awesome reference. Yeah. My, that was a dangerous. And I really uh, want to watch Aramanga Dio again because of that. Right. Oh, holy shit. It's a dangerous proposal because her first order of business is to strip Elf. Well, technically, she says take off a piece of clothing. But Elf, elf is, is Elf. Is elf. <laughs> and the second order of business was to find out who, uh, or what, what pants, panties. panties. I think it was number one, but it turned out to be Maramasa. And uh, it turns out she's not wearing any. 
Well, so you could tell that Sagiri was probing a little bit because she says, number one, and then Muramasa reacts. <laughs> Got her. Yeah. Yep. And then she makes her order. So that was it's very, very sneaky fucking bass. <laughs> <laughs> sneaky fucking bitch. <laughs> Muramasa does not have a poker face. She doesn't need one wearing that mask. And as it turns out, Muramasa doesn't wear panties. Oh, I'm talking about uh, Muramasa. She, she could use that mask. The Aramanga since it wears. Totally free balling. <clears throat> um, I figured she'd wear at least like a fundoshi or something. Yeah, that's what I that's what I thought she would be wearing too. Did she learned from Mark. <laughs> <laughs> but we also get um, Masamune giving Muramasa the um, the most interesting piece of shit. <laughs> An interesting piece of junk. Yes. Very interesting piece of junk. So, a continuation of his was it called Silver Wolf series? Yeah, or it's not really. Story yeah, it's him? not really a continuation. It's more of a side story, after story, spin off, or something. But everyone's I'm not even happy. Sure that I would call it that because it's ba- it, yeah, it's basically a uh, completely different from the main story where yeah. all the characters that got killed off come back to life. It's the happy everybody ending. Has, yeah, everybody has a happy, happy ending. Um, and well, so I, I like that at the beginning of the episode, we see Masamune finishing off that, that little most interesting piece of junk. Mm. And, uh, then he prints it out and he goes to find Muramasa. It's like really early in the morning and he finds her reading one of his throwaway stories that he gave her earlier. Dragon brain. Dragon brood. Actually, I want to point out something else interesting. Hmm. The last time, the last time Masamune made a novel for fun was before he became a professional author, and he was he was publishing on the web. Mm-hmm. And it's, that's actually that's actually really interesting because you know, when when things go from being fun to being a job, you know, it, it's it's weird how the um, Motivation changes, hmm. but I think that that's that's the case with what happened here. Yeah, because he he chucked well, that novel out. And... Well, actually, he he's a speed speed writer anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he likes mass produced stories. He said it quite a few times in the series where he where he says, "This is work. I do this for work." Mm-hmm. Um. So, I, I think that probably does have to do with why a lot of his stories suck. Is because he just views it as work. Yeah, I mean, he kind of mass produces stories. Kind of like those uh, cheap romance novel authors. I mean, right. They write, like, what, several stories a year. Well, technically, a lot of light novel authors write several stories a year, too. But that same kind of approach. You know, they just mass produce, don't really give a lot of thought into it. Just crank them out, novel by novel. And I love Sagiri's art style. Well, as somebody said before, <laughs> um, the person who's drawing all the all of Sagiri's art, like the actual artist that's drawing it, mm. is the uh, mangaka that did um, uh, Masamune Kun No Revenge. Oh. So, if it looks kind of familiar, that's why. Hmm. That's like kind of cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. I'm glad that they got somebody who's, uh, you know, actually does really good art for it too. Uh, but okay, so <laughs> so there's that, and then Masamune goes to sleep because he, he was up all night, and he gets woken up by uh, the most oh. wonderful view in the world. Oh, bye. Well, fun sized. Fun sized. Fun but sized still, Opie. Still counts. But still Opie. Should have hired Shadow. Oh. oh, God. <laughs> you imagine some of the scenes in this anime if Shaft animated it? Perish the thought. <laughs> but um, Are you kidding? They do awesome fan service scenes. So does A1. So does A1. Anyway. Anyway. But, uh. 
<laughs> but yeah, so Elf wakes him up, and then she uh, moves him for the kill, and <coughs> then gets hit by... Ladle of Justice. The Ladle of Doom. This is not your episode. <laughs> that was last week. <laughs> yeah, but then when Muramasa leaves, and um, <laughs> Ma- Masamune uses Elf's real name casually... Oh my god. <laughs> that awkward silence. She, she's waiting for the proposal. And then the second time that uh, I just, Elf I, goes in. I just in, wanted to try it out. You son of a bitch. <laughs> and then the second time that Elf goes in for something, I forgot exactly what it was. Fist of Doom! Brother comes in. Suffer Roth. This is not your episode. <laughs> <laughs> Get to work. And so yeah, that was pretty yeah, much was the rest of the episode is just them having fun with the King's Game and working on stuff. Well, there was also an kind of the, the little, I guess, meat of the real plot of the episode towards the end. Yeah. Where Muramasa, Muramasa says that she doesn't intend to write novels anymore. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, not if she, it. if she can read, yeah, basically, if she can read Masamune's novels, even the junk ones then she's happy and she doesn't need to try to write the most interesting novel in the world. Yeah, absolutely zero people buy that. And uh, yeah, that statement that her retirement doesn't even last a couple of hours. Right. Because Muramasa brings a fan novel, really. A 50-page fan letter. letter. Damn. I mean, damn. (laughs) I, I, I can't wrap my mind around that. I'm like, Jeez, you know, may, maybe like a paragraph or something <laughs> if I really like what someone's doing, but 50 pages of uh, illustrations yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah. and then Elf had, the, <laughs> Elf had the audacity to call Muramasa Chuni. <laughs> but, <Can't> um. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, well, she's not wrong, <laughs> but Elf. Elf. Like she has room to talk about. the water. <laughs> as Ben Rock says. When it bitch, comes to being a chuny. Bitch with help here say what? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, but, yeah, so basically Masamune convinces her to... Uh, Keep writing. Well, to, to choose a new dream. If she's already fulfilled a dream, then choose a new one and move on with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with having don't, with don't chasing your, multiple don't dreams. Let your don't let you stagnant. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Note that Shia LaBeouf makes it pluralized. Dream on. I mean, we dream to not work and do YouTube for a living, but I also dream on sitting on a yacht and being hand-fed grapes by naked Victoria's Secret models. It's okay to have multiple dreams. I don't know you anymore. (laughs) 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 But, But, um... She didn't actually tell what that dream was, but uh, it does tell that it, Masamune has a part of it, and that I, wants, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. she, want, she totally well, wants she, the D. Well, she did say that her dream is to make him love her. Basically, However, taking a page from Elf's playbook. Emily did it better. Emily totally did it better. Emily did it better. <sighs> did she knock off? Ouch. <laughs> Ow. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> so Gary did it first, though. Yikes. Oh, so next episode is likely flashback. going to be a flashback episode. Has so Gary and Masamune met? Well, the yeah. parents remarried. I'm hoping that it's not like just like completely a flashback episode, because that would suck. Right. You can expect, like, some major feels if that's but, the case. But, yeah, I, I'm expecting a kind of downer episode because of how it's bad brutal. things have gone I mean, well, imagine, for, for both siblings I was in say, the you, past. You, you, you lose two sets of parents within, like, a year or so? Well, yeah. Hot well, damn. So, yeah, we know that Masamune's mother died in a in a... I think it was a. She got hit by a car, basically. He already. He already. <laughs> and then, after his father remarries to Sagiri's mother, they go on a trip and die, like in a plane crash or something like that. And then we don't even know what happened to Sagiri's father. So, yikes. Yeah. So, 
downer. If it's about them meeting and then forming their relationship, expect a big downer episode. Yeah. Yep. So. But uh, hopefully after the dose of uh, Muramasa and L for the last couple weeks, hopefully we can make it through. And I'm not sure if we actually said it last week, but mm. um, the fact that they had personalized endings. I like that. I like that, but I wish that they would have done a dancing scene. Yeah, mm. we didn't. Uh, we didn't get it animated, but we got nice fan art, of, or we got nice like official art of. Maybe they'll do something to, for the Blu-rays because they ran out of time. Maybe because yeah. the the endings that they gave us did feel like they ran out of time to do them because yeah. they're literally just still images that they pan, pan up. over. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah. D- don't be an anime parent. You either don't exist or you die early. That should be one of the rules of anime when we when we re- rewrite them. As a tongue twister. <sighs> so let us know what you thought of the anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Yep, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. But that's gonna do it for this episode of anime reaction. I need an adult. <laughs> I'm zero. I am an adult. See, See you next time. time. And go ahead and click on my face to go to our most recent Otaku Saga Talks. Click on my face to go to Otaku Saga Gaming, our gaming channel. And click on the white face to subscribe to Otaku Saga. And if you'd like to help support us, please go ahead and check out our Patreon page.